Thanks for something, bye guys, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Um, I do want to apologize. I have been away from the channel for quite some time. I've been dealing with a lot of family and personal matters, um, so it's taken time away from the channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a bit different. I know a lot of people know I don't like mods. I avoid them the majority of the time, and I almost always build vanilla. But I do play with mods from time to time, and I wanted to see what I could do tanks-wise with mods. Now, this is not extremely modded hopefully it only uses two mods it uses a cannons mod and a camera mod the camera mod allows your creation to track your mouse position so i made an armored car um here it is it's really tiny because it doesn't need the space to fit an actual cannon it can be extremely small because it uses a modded cannon which shoots a potato it explodes on impact and it's really easy to aim because it uses the camera aiming I did originally have a version of this that had two people one for driving one for aiming which made it very easy to shoot on the move because the problem is with this while you're shooting on the move you also have to be careful not to drive into anything this real quick hop into it and you will see the turret will snap to my mouse this is all mouse controlled here and then driving is normal W A S and D one is the main cannon which shoots an explosive spud gun and two is my spud machine gun which I can use for aiming I've noticed that it's a little bit off the cannon seems to be a bit more powerful than a normal spud gun and if we zoom in we have a really nice aiming reticle so let's go ahead and get on the move. It's not the fastest thing. I didn't intend it to be. Partially because the slower movement helps a little bit with fire on the move. If you're moving too fast, the turret can be a bit jittery. Um, because this whole mouse aiming system is not perfect. And because it is mouse aimed, if you have free camera, there we go, free camera, and you're in first person, you have a really nice stabilized camera view. So let's just put this turret to its paces. It can be a bit difficult to fire on the move in this situation with this bad of a terrain, but it is doable, and especially if you're on a, fr a flat or a low... Um, yeah, let's try and hit this rock. Oh, I missed. Oh, and we hit something because we were too focused on shooting. That is one of the problems about having one seat. But you can fire on the move, especially if there's like very little terrain deformation or it's completely flat. Say I want to hit that rock, I'm on a full move, fire, hit the rock, maybe a bit farther than I expected. I want to hit that one up there. I missed because I hit a bump. And fire, hit it, there we go. And overall, it works quite well. Especially if you were to like stop, if you were to use it like a normal tank, stop, and then take time to aim. This is extremely accurate. And because you do have a functioning reticle, it can be even more so accurate than just using a spud gun. Because the problem with the spud gun is at range, it can be really hard to see where the spud gun is landing. Like I can't I can barely see that off the distance. However, if I use this and go ahead and aim. And I don't have perfect elevation, but you can judge it relatively well, especially once you have some practice in it. So let's talk about how this works. There are two mods that make this work, which is the cannon, which is essentially just a spud gun that shoots explosive spud guns. There's not much to it. And the other one is this. This is the sensor. This is attached to your seat, and this tracks your camera position. You will notice it is angled at 15 degrees. The reason for that is if it was angled at zero for the cannon to aim forward, I'd actually have to have my camera looking directly at my tank. But with the angle of 15 degrees, I can actually see over my tank and still shoot forward. And it also works really well in first person view. This is still the 15 degree difference and it works actually near perfect, especially with the reticle. Um, when it was zero degrees, the reticle didn't look completely square now it does actually so i'd argue that this is even better 
Um, and then this sensor is hooked up to some logic back here, which comes with the mod. There's one block here, there's another one that you can't see, it's hidden back there, that controls the two engines for left and right, up and down. These blocks can send a negative value, kind of like a seat can. So when you press, kind of like in a seat, when you press W, you can also press S. These logic blocks here can give the engine a positive single signal and a negative signal. So you only need two engines and two of these logic blocks, which makes it really easy, stupidly easy, in fact. Um, and I do use a gas engine just because I wanted it to be more of an armored car system um, but you could use electric if you really felt like it so i'm gonna try and hit that rock and try not to hit a tree there's a tree <laughs> i didn't mean try not to hit a tree with my car i was afraid that i would shoot and i'd shoot a tree as i was driving by it all right so let's get back on the move there's a hit There's a hit. Let's get moving. There's a hit. There's a hit. And I'm about to drive into a ravine. Nearly missed that. I should also notice that this modded cannon does have a 5 second reload, so I can't spam it all too hard. Uh, you could put multiple cannons pretty easily. But with just one, it's a five second reload. Let's try and hit that tree. And it just detonated on that. Yeah. There is a bit of a problem I've noticed with this mod. Um, it's actually, from what I can tell, it's to do with the barrel itself. If I grab it here, the barrel, the spud gun originates somewhere near this connection point and it has to travel up a hollow barrel. But the issue is, is sometimes the spud gun actually makes contact with the end of the barrel and detonates like it did here, which destroyed the barrel and my whole aiming site. Luckily, I do have this saved. But to be honest, I'm not sure how much more I'm gonna play with it. So here we are. Um, I do have it saved as the modded armored fighting vehicle, Mark I. Uh, if you're asking what the name convention is for this. I have some really weird naming conventions. But I think that is going to be the end of it for this episode. I really don't use mods all too often. There's a number of reasons why. This was a really fun build to do, but at the same time, it, I'm not really impressed by it. Because it... The main mechanics, the gun, and the whole stabilized aiming system rely heavily on mods, and I'm just... It... You... Some people have asked me why I don't like mods. One of the big reasons is exactly what happened here. This was really easy to build. It wasn't really challenging because the mods did everything. There was no design challenge. There was no... This was not a difficult build because there was everything was taken care of by the mods which yes i guess can allow for a bit more creativity and make things a bit easier but the whole engineering challenge that you would have with a normal tank trying to design the cannon and the aiming system is what i enjoy more than just making something that looks cool and functions right i like the actual challenge of overcoming the obstacle of building and engineering it so if that makes any sense, hopefully. I was kind of rambling there, but... Um, I don't expect to do much more with mods. I might from time to time, but I'm going to mostly stick to vanilla. Because that's what I enjoy the most. Um, but I am going to end the episode here. So, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time... Let's try and hit something. Ah, I missed. Peace.